Hello, um, this is the second video for the week four of the microeconomics from the Department of International Trade. And also this is the first video for the new chapter, the consumer choice theory. Um, from the last two chapters, we literally reviewed the principles of microeconomics in detail with more, you know, conceptualized things to understand the important concept of supply and demand curve with the elasticities of demand and supply. So we used a little bit of math to express our understandings in, you know, more visualized ways. Um, based on that basic fundamental stuff, we will start the real microeconomic theory part in intermediate level. Um, the economics at the level of uh, undergraduate are kinds of stepwise. So it is kinds of stairways. So you can start with the principles of micro and macroeconomics, which really use the mathematics. Sometimes you use graph, but most of your understanding will be done in the words or sentence. After that, if you are interested in the more of micro and macroeconomics, then you can go to the intermediate level of micro and macroeconomics. Then it is the real beginning of mathematic approach, the mathematical approach to the economic thinking of ways. Um, so this is intermediate microeconomics. And after you complete this intermediate level of microeconomics, then you can jump again to the advanced level of microeconomics, which deals with a little bit more details in some applications of micro microeconomic theories to various types of markets or various types of you know, market failure things or government intervention things or something. And if you want to m study more about microeconomics after the advanced microeconomics, which is not open for our department, then you can just go to the graduate school. In the graduate school, then you can study at the higher level of uh, microeconomics with more mathematical approaches, but you, know, you can just study in really detail so you can reach to a kind of frontier of the current thought of microeconomics. So, you know, this class is speak, spoken in English, so I know there is some barriers in language or communications, but I strongly recommend you guys to think about going to the graduate school in these days, because these days are um, pretty tough days. I mean, you know, it is very really hard to get a good job after graduation. Reality is bite. Um, even if you go to Seoul National University or maybe Yonsei University, it's the same situation. Um, I heard almost the same story from my friends working for those universities and the students are struggling in getting a good job after graduation. Um, relative to their, you know, descendant, their, you know, former graduates like me or your older brothers and sisters. Shiria, come on. You know, the city is the worst part of iPhone. She never understands what I'm talking about. She's pretty much stupid. Anyway, um, so the good way to avoid a tough situation after graduation from your college is going to the graduate school because I would rather express these days as a um, inflation of your degree, the so degree inflation era, kind of, which means that, you know, maybe 20 years ago, um, 
the bachelor degree is enough to get pretty good job. But now, just bachelor degree is not enough to get a good job. You need more. Many students call that kind of the more thing a the spec or a specification. But I don't think you no know, TOEIC score or some you no know, experience from abroad is is kind of they are kind of marginal things. The important thing is that the real upgrade of your ability or your capability to work with the higher level of your coworkers, which will be the higher degree of studying. I I believe that. So um, I don't recommend you guys to complete the PhD or doctoral degree, but the master's degree for two years could be enough for you guys to find out the better job. And investing two years in school with the good advisors, good professors, and the hardworking study will give you enough benefit or enough compensation. If you are interested in going to graduate school, please contact me because I'm a kind of expert of the graduate school life. Because I spent my six years in the late 20s from 26 years. I went to the graduate school at the 26 years old, right after graduating my college. And I got my master's degree two years later and another four years later, I got my PhD degree. So I just spent the brilliant period of my life from 26 to 31 in the graduate school. Why all of my friends started working, getting money and dating with their girlfriend or boyfriend you know, doing some fabulous life. Um, I didn't do that. I had to just study, just study in the dark, li 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 dark library and, you know, without any bright future. So that six years were pretty dark and pretty tough. But after that, after that, you know, I got pretty much good compensation in my life. You know, I didn't graduate any the Sky University, you know what I mean? You no, know, Seoul National University, Yonsei and Korea University. You know, all the people think, you know, getting to that types of prestigious universities will guarantee you the good life. The reality is not true. But anyway, so I didn't go to that kind of good college, so I think I was pretty similar with you guys in the situation where you belong to. Um, and I would not expect to get a professor job at the Chungnam National University, which is, I believe, the best job among all of my friends right now. And they are really embarrassed of me, you know, because they are still working for a company or working for, you know, something. And they have to go to their workplace at nine and until and they work until 6 p.m. You know every day but I can just go home at 2 p.m. you know and getting paid more than them so I think this is a pretty good job so no okay so um, I'm wasting too many times for you guys but anyway so going to graduate school is a good choice so you can just think about it Anyway, so this is the first part of the consumer choice theory and I warn you, I warn you this one will be difficult for many of you guys. I mean, if you don't put much effort in understanding some important definitions or concepts, then you're going to get a little bit of trouble um, in many ways, in many pages. So be careful that this one and the other chapters later in this semester will be difficult. So please study by yourself as much as you can. And if you have any question or if you have any difficulties in understanding any part, then you should definitely email me or post your own writings on our cyber campus that I can I can I can see your post and I can give you right answer within 24 hours. I guarantee you. Okay. So we are studying about the microeconomics and what do you think about what is microeconomics?
why wh- why do you study microeconomics and what do you think the job of microeconomics have you ever thought about it um i think i think the microeconomics is study about the human being study about the behaviors of the human being and their interactions between humans so um what is the standard of behaviors that's the big question the microeconomics has and their answers is a market okay so within the market we can observe many behaviors of human beings and we can observe some pattern of human beings and we can make it as kind of data or we can make it as a kind of general form or general theory by observing so many behaviors of human beings and many economists found out that there are two representatives economic agent in the market so we can categorize the human beings by two types in the market so this is the first part of those two types so we'll talk about the consumer's behavior and after finishing that we can talk about the producer's behaviors and we can conclude that the market is a place where consumers and the producers will meet each other and interact with each other so um the economist is sometimes a little bit exaggerated person so they argue that the market is almost everything of our society they can they believe every interactions of human beings in our real world can be defined by an interaction within the market i don't think so but i can partly agree with them because many of our interactions with others can be categorized in one of consumer or producers so um studying about the consumers behaviors and the producers behaviors are pretty much important to understand what the microeconomics thinking about our real world in the form of the market economy okay so we are not talking about the planned economy like some you know socialist point of view that's totally different story of economics so we are living in the capitalism world which means that we are based on the two things to maintain our society one thing is a law okay and so you can just go to law school then you can study about that and the other fundamental to maintain our society is the market so we can call the capitalism economy as the market economy so the market is really important to understand what our society can be made of okay and the economists argue that okay so there are two important types of people in the market one is consumer and the other one is producer so we are starting thinking about what the consumer's behaviors are right um so um I already warned you this one is difficult and there is a reason why this one is difficult because this one is really abstract word um uh, economists observe the real data or observe the real interactions of people but they make it a little bit of abstract because they want to generalize their behaviors they want to you know modelize their behaviors as the simplest form a definitely the form is written in the language of mathematics so mathematics is one of the language that can abstract everything to the higher level so for some beginners point of view it is really difficult to understand but if you are getting more familiar with that way of expression then you can find out that so this way is so simple and so convenient to understand everything and you can also express your own thinking about our real world as that types of language 
Alright, so these are some important concepts you should understand, right? If you don't understand any of them, then you're gonna get trouble in your midterm or final. I'm gonna talk about our midterm plan. Um, maybe the next video because you know the university headquarter is still hesitated to determine what the form of midterm is. So I'm not determined yet, but I will thinking about and I'm thinking about right now. So I will tell you guys what my plan for the midterm will be in the next video, or maybe I can post up the new kind of announcement on our cyber campus. Okay, so um, there are four important concepts which formulate the behaviors of consumer in the market. The first one is preference. The preference means every consumer has their own taste. Reasonable assumption, right? I have my own taste. I prefer iPhone to Samsung Galaxy S or something. And I prefer eating salad than eating a pork or chicken because I'm a half vegetarian. So I'm, I really want to be a vegetarian, but in reality of South Korean community, I sometimes have to eat the pork or meat or chicken. So, you know, except that conditions, then I prefer to eat some vegetables rather than the pork or meat. So that is the preference. The preference has a ranking, that's important thing. So I prefer something to the others, which means that I have my own ranking or some kinds of packing order of my consumption. Consumption. Okay. The utility. Utility is some kinds of function, so transformation function that transform your ranking of your consumption into a specific number or specific the measurement. Because the ranking does not have any absolute value. It is really comparative values in your ranking, right? I like this one, then that one. You can say that, but how much from scale one to 10, how much you like that one? How much like you that one? It is really hard. So utility function can doing that job. Okay. The budget constraint. I like to consume everything if I can, but I know I can't because my income is limited. So that income limitation means the budget is constrained. So I can maximize my utility based on my preference and consideration of my budget constraint. Okay. So if I have more income, then I can consume more and the structure of my consumption will be based on my preference. Okay. Easy. So you can just make your own map in your brain before starting the real world of the difficult abstraction. So you no, know, combining all those three concepts, then we can make a problem and we can solve for the problem, which is called the constrained consumer choice. So consumer have to, every consumers have to choose something. They have to make a decision. Which one will be consumed first and how many or how much you're going to consume based on your preference and based on your income. Okay, so that's consumer's choice problem. And we're going to study how to solve for that problem in a mathematical way. Okay, understand? Okay, so that's the summary I talk about briefly. Every consumer, every single consumer has their own taste or preference, which will give you some kinds of pleasure or some kinds of happiness, okay? For instance, you don't eat a shit. You don't eat soy because it does not give you any happiness, but you eat pizza, right? And you buy some clothes or cosmetics because they will give you a happiness. And any kinds of goods and services, then you have your own packing order or you have your own ranking, which means that, you know, if you're a girl, then you love Chanel or Bobby Brown. Sometimes you prefer 
SK2 to Abeda or something. So you have your own ranking Be because you know, you know yourself well than everybody else. That's the preference. And you know your income is, how much your income will be transformed to your uh, balance. So you know your income limit and you want to just allocate your income into the several consumptions plans, right? If you have more income, then you're going to buy more cosmetics. But if your income is pretty low, then you stop buying cosmetics and just staying home or something. So your problem as a consumer is pretty easy and simple. Maximizing your happiness. How, how could you do that? How could you maximize your happiness? Maximizing your consumption level is maximizing your happiness. So you want to maximize your consumption, but your income is limited. So under that limitation, you want to maximize your utility. So that's the consumer's choice problem. So let us thinking about the structure of preference in detail because um, these steps are pretty much important to define what the consumer's preference is. Okay, so the important, the bottom line is that your preference has the complete linking, which means that there is no draw, there is no musungbu, there is only winners and losers in your consumption bundle. Okay, for instance, let's think about the simplest version of your consumption. There are only two goods in your consumption choice set, one good and the other good. Then you can say that, okay, so um, I'm going to consume the two units of good A and the one unit of good B. So that's my starting point. If you can consume the three units of good A and two units of good B, that's better for you, right? So the first law of the preference is that you have a ranking and the ranking is really complete because you have you know yourself, so you can say that this bundle of consumption could be prepared to that bundle of consumption. So that's completeness. And the second assumption is the transitivity. Transitivity is that your preparing structure is consistent, which means that if you prepare that bundle set to the other bundle set, we can say that Mm. you have bundle A and you have bundle B. Bundle A means the three units of good A, so three units of good one, and the two units of good two. And the bundle B is the two units of good one and one unit of good one. So bundle A is prepared to good bundle B. And you have another bundle, which is C, and the C is prepared to bundle A, then C should be prepared to bundle B, okay? So it should be the transitive. You know what I mean? Okay, so there are three bundles and one bundle and the other bundle is, has a relationship. They have a ranking and you have the third bundle. It could be any of this part, okay? The third one, the more is better. That's really intuitive one, right? So all the things equal, all the conditions are equal, then more of your bundle commodity is always better than the less bundle of that commodity, okay? So if you consume less of any bundle, then your conditions of happiness will be worsened for sure. But it is not always the true for everything, which means that something that can give you the reverse happiness can be, you know, your preference can be reversed, such as the pollution. The less is better in pollution, right? But you have to consume pollution because you cannot avoid consuming pollution. So, you know, consuming pollution is our destiny in our life. 
but the less pollution consumption will be always better for our life. So more is better, transgbt and the completeness. They are three kinds of important characteristics of the preference. So now we will introduce the new concept which we'll use it to make it graph. So make it graph, so preference is real conceptual things and it is real abstract, so hard to understand. So we want to draw out in the two dimensional graph by using the indifference curves, then we can get the more visual understanding about the preference. Okay, so the indifference curve, well, what's the meaning of indifference? No. Please look at the neighbor, Yongon Hajan or something and find out the meaning of indifference. Indifference means that there is nothing better or nothing worse. In the same indifference curve, everything will give you the same happiness or same utility. Okay, so whatever the indifference curve's shape is, any point along that one indifference curve will give you the same utility. So any bundle of consumption on the indifference curve are indifferent to me. You understand that? Let's see the graph. So let's look at the left side of graph. So there are two colored rectangular, the green one and a little bit of red one. Okay. So we can start with point E, okay? And you can say that point F and the point D, right? So which one is the preferred to you? Which one is better for you? I think the F, sorry, can I, can I test the sound? Because there is the consistent signal that my volume is too low. Are you guys okay with that? I cannot check with that. So please. Okay. All right. Okay. Not bad. It's pretty good, right? So point F is prepared to point D for sure, because at point F, you can consume more pizza and burrito at the same time, right? The F is kind of bundle of your consumption, pizza and burrito. At D, you can consume about 15 pizzas per semester and 10 burritos per semester. So D is also a bundle of your consumption of, of the pizzas and burritos. So D is strictly not prepared to F because you can consume more pizzas and more breeders than point D, okay? So our guess is from the origin to the farther point, which will be more prepared, right? Have you ever guys eaten burritos? I love burritos. And in Gungdong, there is one store that you can eat the best burritos in Daejeon area. I forgot the name of the store, but I can give you the name um, later. But the burritos were super delicious. So you can try that burritos in the Gungdong. So that, I think that store is almost the end of the Gungdong area. You can just go to the direction of the Kaist, the Hanbit Apat, and turn right a little bit. Then you can find out the store, the burrito store, which will be awesome. Okay. Um, the right side graph is the kind of normal shape of graph of indifference curves. So we know the F is prepared to D. Then how about A and E on the right hand side? We cannot determine. Because at point A, you can consume more pizza, but at point E, you can consume more burritos. So we cannot determine it. 
point A is strictly preferred to pre point B because you can eat more pizza and more burritos at point A than B. But we cannot determine which one is more preferred between point A and E. So we are indifferent between point A and E. So they can be drawn out the same indifferent curve. Interesting, right? So again, we can draw out the graph because we know point A, E, and C, we cannot determine our preference, so they are on the same independent curve. But we know, we definitely know point F is strictly preferred to point E and point D. So point F should be, it must be drawn out on another independent curve. We can name it as I2. Okay, I2, any point on I2 is strictly preferred to I1 and I0. How about I0, which, is, which includes point D? We know point D is not preferred to F, not preferred to E, or less preferred to point F and E. So D should be also drawn out on the different independent curves. So our, what is our conclusion? First, from the origin, the farther point, the more distance will give you more happiness. So they will have the better utility. How about in terms of indifference curves? I2 on the right hand side graph, I2, any point in I2 is strictly preferred to any point of I1 or I0, okay? So going to direction of the farther point, any independence curve will give you more or higher utility. So you have specific ranking, right? I2 has higher ranking than I1, and I1 is strictly higher ranking than I0. So let's check the three characteristics of preference curves on the independence curve. First one is completeness. It is complete, right? I2 is completely preferred to I1 and I0. So our ranking is complete. And transitivity, it is also satisfied. I1 is preferred to I0 and I2 is preferred to I1. So I2 is preferred to I0. So transitivity makes sense. More is better assumption also makes sense. On point F, 30 units of pizza and about 20 units of burritos are consumed. On D, the worst ranking in different curves, 15 units of pizza and the 10 units of burritos are consumed. So at the higher ranking of independence curve F, the more is definitely better. So it makes sense as well. So all the three characteristics of, of preference could be applied to the characteristics of independence curves. So we can say that independence curves is the graphical representations of our preference. So we are done in preference. That's the summary. And some important characteristic. Number one, we already talked about it. And number two, could be also easily understood because you know there is a line between line and line and that line and the line the between their space there is another line and between the line and the new line there is another space and we can draw out another line so the independence curve in the two-dimensional world can cover every single consumption bundle of our world theoretically it is true and the third and the fourth characteristics are extremely important. So you should definitely understand those two things. First, independence curves cannot cross each other because if you have the crossing independence curve, one of three characteristics or properties will be violated. It is your homework. You can do by yourself. Test the crossing independence curve and which characteristics are 
violate it. You can test it. Second, indifference curve usually downward graph. Why? We can see that later. Okay, so this is the hint for your test. If there is any types of crossing independence curves, then you're gonna have a little bit weird characteristics of um, preference. You can do that. You can just do compare point A and B and what happened in your preference. Our practice problems is a little bit going further. Can independence curves be thick, which means that it is not a line, but it is kind of area of independence curves? Is it possible? You can also find out that one of our three characteristics will be violated with the thick curves, like this. With thick independence curve, assumably point A and B could be included in one single independence curve, but the more is better assumption is violated with this the thick independence curve because B is definitely more is better than A, but if they will give you the same preference or same happiness, we cannot stand for more is better assumption anymore. So we cannot have the thick independence curve. Okay, so this is the first part of um, consumer choice theory. So you can just think about the preference today. Then I'm gonna give you the second part of this chapter pretty soon because our time is almost up to 37 minutes, which is too long for most of the 20 years old students. Okay, so um, be safe at your house. Never get out of your house poor, you no know, drinking something or meeting people in the public space. You should definitely avoid the situation for your health and also the health of your community, your family, and your you know, parent. So please be safe and see you in the next video. Bye.